Great, Jen. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say a quick welcome to everybody on behalf of the Manufacturing Institute and Heroes Make America. As Jen said, Heroes Connect is our initiative to virtually introduce you to manufacturers like Sherwin-Williams that are hiring today. This is something that we set up to replace in-person tours when we were limited in being able to do those, but we have realized this is still an incredible way to connect you with these manufacturers, regardless of your physical location or theirs. We really appreciate you joining us today. For anyone that's not familiar with Heroes Make America, wanted to make sure you are aware that we are a currently, um, you know, it's an initiative to really connect the military and the manufacturing industry. We are currently operating and on installations in several locations across the country. And if you are interested in learning more about how to participate, I encourage you to reach out to us on LinkedIn, send us a message through the chat today and email directly to some of our team members. Speaking of team members, the slide that is currently up showcases the incredible folks that bring this program to you at our different sites, but also supporting folks like you from all across the country. Today, we are incredibly excited to showcase not just our sponsor, but our really dedicated partner and friends from Sherwin-Williams. They really are a leader in the military veteran community and representing the best in manufacturing. It is my privilege to introduce Madison Klepsik, who is an HR specialist in global supply chain to kick things off and introduce the rest of the Sherwin team. Thanks everybody again for being here today. Hi everyone, hope everyone's having a great day so far. We are very excited to have the chance to talk to you all about Sherwin-Williams and answer any questions you might have. So if we wanna go ahead and move to the next slide. All right. So on behalf of the Sherwin-Williams company, we thank you all for your service. And I'm very excited to also introduce um, some other members from our Sherwin team. So we have Michelle Birkin, we have Ryan Webb mm -hmm. and Dolly Rosa also on the line with us today to help go over some awesome Sherwin info. All right, so I'm ready for the next slide. Okay, so this slide's just going to be, you know, an overview of what we're gonna talk about today. So starting off, we're gonna give an overview of the Sherwin-Williams history. So how we started and where we are today. Next, we're going to do a division overview. We have a few different divisions within our company. A lot of people just think of our paint stores, but we're actually um, you know, a lot larger than that. Next, we're gonna do a deep dive into our global supply chain division, which Michelle, Ryan, and Dolly and I are all a part of. And then we're going to touch on how we are responding to the recent COVID-19 pandemic and end with some employee testimonials. All right, so this next slide coming up is going to be a video that is going to go over the history of Sherwin. Um, so once this next slide shows up on our screen, we'll go ahead and get started with this video um, and it'll give us just a better idea of how we started and how we got to where we are today. The Sherwin-Williams story begins in 1866 when a 24-year-old man arrived in Cleveland, entered the paint industry, and set about revolutionizing it. Within a few short years, Henry Sherwin would invent the first ready mixed paint and the resealable paint can. In 1890, Sherwin Williams introduces a line of marine finishes 19 years before the Titanic is even built. In 1905, the company introduces its long standing Cover the Earth logo. The 20s are a time for global expansion and global recognition. The company's line of aviation coatings would be used on some of the most historic flights of the 20th century. In 1941, Sherwin introduces Chemtone, a revolutionary new paint that doesn't require primer or sealer. It sells 3 million gallons in its first year. When the men leave for the front lines, Sherwin-Williams hires the first women fillers and cappers to keep production lines rolling. In 1940, 
1961, the company introduces a paint can shaker that can mix five gallon containers, enabling customers to buy paint in larger quantities. 1977, sales top one billion dollars. 1992, the company opens its 2000th store. Sherwin-Williams helps to repaint the Pentagon after 9-11, donating 10,000 gallons to the restoration effort. The company's products come to protect and embellish many of America's most iconic landmarks and beloved assets. In 2011, Sherwin-Williams is nationally recognized for its low VOC soybean PET formulation. In 2015, it launches Paint Sheet, the first EPA-registered paint with the power to kill bacteria. And in 2017, Sherwin-Williams completes the largest acquisition in its history. One hundred fifty years of heritage, one hundred fifty years of innovation, one hundred fifty years of performance. So after one hundred and fifty years, today our global footprint spreads across more than one hundred and ten countries. We have over 60,000 employees worldwide and continue adding locations to our 4,600 plus Sherwin Williams store. Um, we do have another video detailing the different divisions in our company in the next slide. Um, you know, most of you do know us from our retail stores like Madison mentioned, uh, but Sherwin Williams does have multiple divisions that focus on a variety of different customers. Um, next slide, if you please. This is a sales and marketing story, a manufacturing story, a tale of worldwide distribution and just-in-time delivery. This is a story about what matters most, the products and assets we depend on every day, and the people whose job it is to protect and enhance them. This is Sherwin-Williams. People experience Sherwin-Williams in many ways, from our paint stores, to our consumer products, to our iconic projects around the world. But to uncover the meaning behind what we do, you have to look beyond the labels. We don't just make great products, we serve people. Contractors, DIYers, manufacturers, big and small. We provide our customers innovative solutions to ensure their success no matter where they work or what surfaces they're coding. And we serve each other. From our headquarters in Cleveland, where we support our family of employees around the globe, to our four operating groups. In the communities around the world where you'll find our stores, the Americas Group serves contractors and homeowners with Sherwin-Williams branded paints, stains, and supplies. Consumer Brands Group empowers makers, do-it-yourself customers, and pro painters with one of the industry's strongest portfolios of branded and private label products. Performance Coatings Group develops, manufactures, and sells automotive finishes, oil coatings, general industrial coatings, industrial wood coatings, packaging coatings, protective and marine coatings, as well as engineered polymer solutions to a diverse customer base in over 100 countries. While Global Supply Chain is a highly efficient end-to-end -end supply chain encompassing architectural research and development, manufacturing, distribution, and logistics. This is a story about what we can achieve when we work together. About transforming, beautifying, and protecting the world around us. About having an impact. It's the kind of thing we've been doing for more than 150 years. Most of all, this is a people story. And it's you, our employees around the world, who will shape where we go from here. Welcome to Sherwin-Williams. Hi everyone. Um, I don't know if anyone else is 
uh, seeing that there's a little bit of a blur on the screen, but this next um, this next one just talks about the global supply chain uh, part of the company. So you, in that video we just watched, we heard about the Americas Group, which is our paint stores, our consumer brands, our performance coatings group, and uh, we support all those sales and marketing divisions. And you know, our main motto there is drive continuous improvement. So what improvement can we do to that end-to-end -end supply chain um, to help our sales and marketing divisions and our company? It all starts with that research and development where we get, you know, those ideas that come from our customers, um, researching new, new products, making products better um, to our global procurement that procures the, the raw materials our supply chain management group that helps with our forecasting of our products and scheduling um, to our manufacturing plants across the globe that are making those products. And then with those products going off to our uh, distribution service centers, where then uh, orders can be picked, put onto our own Sherwin-Williams private fleet. Um, and then with that customer in mind at the very end of our end-to-end um, -end supply chain. So, as you can see here, you know, we are a very large organization um, with, again, over 120 factories, um, a fairly large distribution network, um, a fleet with over 800 drivers and, um, you know, over 300,000 customers. Uh, moving on to the next slide. This just gives you an idea of just how vast we are here in North America, in the United States and Canada. Um, I know it's a lot to look at on this map, but you know, all those stars represent where we have a manufacturing or distribution service center. Within the global supply chain, we kind of divide ourselves out by what we call five regions. Our East operations is primarily those architectural paint plants and those distribution centers and those private truck fleets that really service primarily our tag organization, our stores group. And then the same thing for the West, um, the architectural paint plants, the distribution service centers and that um, fleets um, where the NA coatings region, then which you see kind of in the green, um, and the industrial, which is kind of in that orange, um, gold or orange color there, those are the sites that actually support that performance coatings where we are doing a lot more industrial type paint, uh, whether it's to go on a big Navy ship, whether it's to go on the Golden Gate Bridge, whether it's to paint the inside of a Campbell soup can with a coating or a refrigerator. So that's where you see all that industrial uh, type uh, coatings. And then our specialty operations, which is in that light blue, um, is kind of where we're making not the, not the paint, but some of those associated products. So our Krylon aerosols, our Minwax stains, um, our caulk, our purdy brushes. Um, so all those types of things that may not be liquid or, or paint, but um, is still a big important part of our business that we sell not only through our stores, but through places like Home Depot and Lowe's and Menards and things like that as well. So again, really large, diverse um, company making a lot of different products, um, but also um, as you can see located across the US and Canada. So you can see there, we've got a really strong presence in Illinois. I think that's probably got the most uh, locations um, but then all the way out west where we've got our, you know, uh, Purdy plant in uh, Portland, Oregon, um, the newest paint facility in Fernley, Nevada, um, and then you get all the way down there to Texas, um, and even the, down there into Florida. So you can see we have a pretty large um, blueprint um, here in North America. Moving on to the next slide. I think it just gives you an idea of all the different products and brands that we have. So, you know, obviously our flagship brand that we're most proud of is our Sherwin-Williams brand, uh, where you find that in our Sherwin-Williams company-owned stores. Um, but we have a lot of really strong brands uh, like Valspar and Minwax and Purdy Brushes, uh, a Dutch Boy, Pratt & Lambert, Krylon Aerosols, you know, Thompson's Water Seals. And again, this is just a very small, you know, 
uh, grouping of our brands. We, we have hundreds of really strong brands um, that uh, um, are just great products, uh, like I said, where we've put a lot into um, innovation and making them the best uh, in, in the industry. I think we could move to our next slide. All right, so next I wanted to talk a little bit about our response to the recent COVID-19 pandemic. So as a company, we have done a lot to help um, healthcare professionals and frontline workers. We've donated over 250,000 masks, gloves, and lab coats to healthcare workers on the front lines. We've also done a lot of things more locally, each plant or store kind of focusing on um, their own city or region to help out with those who need. And then we've also been manufacturing sanitizer at our plants, um, which was a big um, movement for us just to kind of help out with everything that's been going on in, in the world. It's been a difficult time for all of us. So kind of being able to lend a hand in that way was definitely a big deal for Sherwin. Um, and we've also provided coatings to businesses to make ventilators and hospital bed frames as well. So just wanted to give you guys an idea of some of the things that Sherwin has been doing and has been continuing to work on to help others um, with this recent COVID-19 pandemic. And we can move on to the next slide. everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Webb. So I also work in Sherwin-Williams Global Supply Chain um, with the rest of the team here. Um, and I just kind of want to touch on a few of the different operations uh, that take part in our global supply chain division. So we'll kind of run through um, just, you know, a brief overview of, you know, what we do in manufacturing, distribution, and transportation, um, what kind of positions, you know, that we have to offer in those lines of work, and most importantly, you know, what we make and what we ship. Um, so obviously, you know, and you've seen in all these videos over the last, you know, 25 minutes, um, you know, you drive around and you do your day-to-day -day things and you tend to see Sherwin-Williams stores. Well, I'm sure somewhere in the back of your head, you're wondering where the product comes from, right? So in, in global supply chain, you know, the main thing that we do is me. So you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, oh, that's great. You guys make paint. Well, Actually, we make a lot more than paint, kind of just like Michelle talked about a little bit ago um, when she was going through the map. Um, you know, we have a plant in Portland, Oregon, and they make roller covers. You know, it's a pretty brush plant. We have plants that make paint, um, you know, plants that make wood sealers, you name it. So each one of our operations are very different. Um, we have a plant in Bedford, Ohio. They actually run 15 different sizes of aerosol cans. I work at Sherman Williams and I didn't even know there was 15 different sizes of aerosol cans myself. Um, but really, you know, in all these different operations that we have, it really allows us to have a lot of different job opportunities. Um, you know, and if you kind of look towards the middle of the slide here, um, it kind of shows you, you know, progression throughout a career um, in manufacturing at Sherman Williams. Um, you know, and the first step for a lot of people is to become a production operator. Um, so, you know, let's run the production lines, they maintain the equipment, they make sure that, you know, our paint continues to run because many of these plants run 24 seven operations. Um, you know, our stores are really open from, you know, seven in the morning to seven in the evening, and that's it. But, you know, we never stop making paint um, because, you know, from a store's perspective, there's about 4,000 Sherman Williams stores um, spread across North America. And in addition to that, we're actually the sole paint provider for 2,200 Lowe's stores. So, you know, we're making all that paint on our lines to make sure that we get it out as a team. So, and then in addition to production operators, you know, there's tons of room for uh, career progression. Um, you know, you can become a team lead. Um, there's also cross-functional support team positions. Um, you know, those might be something like, you know, a warehouse manager that, you know, works in one of our production plants um, or, you know, a manager that does some of the scheduling of our paint. Um, and then there's tons of staff op opportunities as well, you know, engineering, maintenance, supply chain, um, human resources and safety. I mean, you know, when you look at operations, I like to kind of call them, you know, the big three to getting the job done when you're making paint. But, you know, you have your true operations jobs, you know, your production or distribution jobs. You have your maintenance jobs because you need to maintain the equipment, right? So if the equipment doesn't run, you know, you can't push it to make paint. 
but then most importantly, you have your safety jobs as well, because I mean, safety really does, you know, kind of trump everything in regards to manufacturing, distribution, and and day to day life. I mean, you know, there's no point in making pain if you're not gonna, you know, take your time and and be safe and you know, pay attention and you know, we don't want anyone to get injured. Uh, you know, we want everyone to leave work the same way that they came um, and be able to go home to their families. So that's kind of an overview of our manufacturing career opportunities. Um, you will notice on the right, and this is on the next slide as well too, but I'll, I'll just cover it now before we get into distribution. We do have a very robust benefits package um, at Williams. And obviously it starts off with, you know, a competitive salary, but in addition to that, you know, progressive pay increases, um, but most importantly, what really catches my eye are the benefits, um, you know, 401k, you know, a lot of companies offer a 401k, but fortunately at Sherman Williams, you know, we match dollar per dollar up to 6%. And that's a great contribution to have. Um, and in addition to a great 401k, we also have a company paid pension. So, you know, I know many of you folks being from the military have pension plans, but when you, you look at, you know, the private sector and you look at businesses, not many businesses have pensions anymore other than government agencies. Um, so it's a great benefit to have. It's very unheard of in 2020. Um, you know, I hire a lot of truck drivers at Sherwin-Williams in my day-to-day -day operations that I do. Um, and a lot of them can't believe it when I tell them. They say, I, I cannot believe that you guys offer a company pension. You know, and it's, it's something that's a, a diamond in the rough. You know, not many people know until we really talk about it. Um, and then we have medical benefits as well. Um, you know, disability coverage, paid vacation days, paid holidays, tuition assistance. So the tuition assistance is a great tool. Um, you know, if you wanted to go back to school or you wanted to get a certification, you know, in regards to maintenance or you wanted to get a supply chain certification or HR, I mean, there's tons of different routes that you can go um, and then training and certification programs. So our manufacturing is very robust. Um, there's a lot to it and a lot going on, and, and I'm definitely willing to answer any questions that might come up, you know, later down the road here. Um, Tyler, if you want to switch to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about distribution. And then distribution, um, you know, at Sherwin-Williams is a, it's a very fast-paced environment. Um, you know, when Michelle showed you guys that map earlier, there's about 60, 65 locations on that map. Um, you know, give or take a, a few here, you know, about 60 of those six of them are distribution centers. So, you know, they make the paint. Um, we actually ship the paint on our own trucks from our plants to our distribution centers. Um, and that's where we kind of offload it and stock it. And we have order pickers and high lift reach truck drivers, loaders, unloaders, you name it. I mean, there's so many different pieces of distribution that, you know, until I spent time at Sherman Williams, I used to work in distribution, you know. There's a lot of opportunity for positions that I didn't even know, you know, existed. You know, we have people who run relabel operations, people who handle damaged product, people who do the planning for our loads, people who do the scheduling, people who do dispatching. I mean, you name it. So, you know, distribution is a great environment to work in, especially at Sherwin-Williams, because we have a lot more products in distribution than we actually manufacture. So if you were to go into a Sherwin, Williams. You can purchase Warner ladders, you can purchase 3M tape, you can purchase lights, anything that you think a contractor might need in a painting environment, we ship it and sell it. So a lot of those products come from outside vendors straight to our distribution centers. And then from there, we pick the products, we put them on the truck, and we ship them to the store. Um, so just to kind of cover distribution a little bit more from a career progression standpoint, you know, we have a, you know, warehouse technicians is obviously a big one for us, you know, and our warehouse technicians do a lot. Um, at Sherwin-Williams, they always start off picking orders, and then they get cross-trained. You know, they can put away products on the racks using high lifts. They can run sit-down forklifts. Um, you know, you name it. We have tons of different automation and things that we use to pick orders um, that we use as continuous improvement, because Michelle mentioned earlier, continuous improvement is a major factor in our operation. Um, and then team leads as well, um, you know, and we have unit managers, supervisors, management opportunities, you know, are routinely available at all of our areas. Um, so it's a, a great way to advance in your career. Um, and then, you know, last but not least um, is our transportation. And this is on the next slide here. Um, so in transportation, 
Um, there, we really have a lot going on. Um, we have our own private fleet of truck drivers and I promise I won't rant too long on this, but transportation really is my baby here at Sherman Williams. I work with it every day of my life. Um, and, uh, you know, we have traffic managers, drivers, dispatchers, you name it. Um, and we have about between part-time and full-time over 800 truck drivers across the United States. And a lot of people don't realize this. They think we just make and ship paint. Um, but what they don't realize is that we pick up our own raw materials and we take them to our plant and then we pick up our product from our plant and take them to our distribution center. And after that, we take it to our store with our own drivers. Um, and, you know, having a fleet is great because we can ensure that our product gets to our store on time. Um, and, you know, we run Volvo trucks and have, you know, big blue trailers that have our name on them. You know, next time you're out on the highway, you know, take a look and see if you see one. Um, and, you know, now that you're realizing that we have a fleet, you might notice them. Um, but, you know, it's a great, you know, career path to take as well. Um, you know, we hire experienced drivers with two years of experience, um, you know, and they build careers from there. Uh, we also have a lot of, you know, capability to move from starting in our warehouse after, you know, X amount of years of being at Sherman Williams, we offer a driver training program. So, you know, it's a, it's a great operation to work in um, and something that, uh, not a lot of people know that we do here at Sherman Williams. And then uh, we're gonna watch a brief video here, I think. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna leave it up to Mr. George Clay, um, production supervisor out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, or Kentucky right? Yeah, this is St. Ohio, I'm from Cleveland, so. <laughs> but you can go ahead and play that video, Tyler. <laughs> We have our rodeo going on. This is the national rodeo. Every DC has a local rodeo, and the first uh, and second place winners come to the nationals, and here we are. I've never been on a racetrack like this, and it's it's kind of a nice change of pace. This is an event where they test driver skills in operating uh, trucks that are nearly 70 feet long and weigh up to 80,000 pounds. Got some tennis balls lined up. Really have to calculate it just right to make that trailer tandems go in between there. You have to get close as you can to the dock plate without touching it. Then you have the uh, serpentine cones, so you have to weave it in and out of that and make sure you don't hit anything. And at the very end, you come to a stopping point. You got to come close to a line without actually hitting it. So I like this, man. They're really showing how they respect our, their, their drivers. We all come here and compete. And it's all good, man. It's all good stuff. Sherwin-Williams has a reputation for quality and for service. And the reputation is unmatched. respect from the other drivers when you roll into these truck stops. They know who you're working for. They see those big blue trucks. It's a good place to work, stable place to work, great benefits, great people. No matter from West Coast to East Coast, everybody treats you with respect. Being the largest paint company in the world, you know that they must be doing something right. They realize that the drivers are the backbone of this company. I'm uh, so proud to work for Sherwin-Williams. It's just a fantastic company to drive for. Ryan, I kind of think I want to be a truck driver now. <laughs> don't tell Babs. Babs, that yeah, is. Don't, I won't tell her. <laughs> but just real quick to touch on that, too, real fast before George goes here, just so you guys know, um, that was at Texas Motor Speedway, so... Every year, um, you know, we have local driver rodeos and the winners get to travel to a location, it usually ends up being an NASCAR track. Um, and we do like a driver rodeo, which is really just like a safe driving precision contest, um, you know, and then there's like a big banquet and a lot of other pieces that go with that. So just to fill you in on that. So just take it away, George. All right. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I am currently a production uh, supervisor out at the Sherwin-Williams Valspar plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, I am a, a retired veteran from the Army. I uh, spent 20 years in the Signal Corps um, and on my way out, uh, bumped into this awesome program called Heroes Make America. 
what an awesome bridging opportunity that was. Uh, I'm also a graduate uh, from the first cohort out of uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky for the Mechtronics program. I am a Siemens certified level one uh, assistant for Mechtronics uh, as well. So big shout out to Jen. That was part of her first group going through uh, Fort Campbell and uh, the placement of where I'm at now has a lot to do with her efforts, uh, Heroes Make America, and uh, the team at Sharon Williams to recognize uh, the qualities that the veterans are bringing out. So big shout out to them as well. So I'm working on the uh, um, performance coatings part of Sharon Williams. So this is more the industrial side. This is not the paint that you'll see inside your house, uh, but it is the paint that you'll see on probably a lot of the appliances in your house. Uh, the gutters on my house uh, were actually painted with material that was made in the plant that I work in. Uh, that was pretty cool to find out. Um, you won't necessarily see this in the stores. This is the stuff that goes out for major industrial um, advances like coil coating. Uh, you saw pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge. That's the kind of paint that we're making uh, that can withstand a lot of, uh, you know, the marine environment, being outside, UVs. Uh, tough weather environments um, and things that necessarily need to be painted but not powder coated. When you look at a lot of things that have been uh, painted in industry before, it's a powder coating. They uh, spray it on. When they go to bend it, a lot of that will displace. It'll move. It doesn't mold onto the, the metal quite well. So what we're doing in the uh, performance coating is allowing uh, industry to be able to paint their metals and then stamp, bend, mold, uh, have both sides of that metal painted so they don't have to go back in and try and paint back behind, uh, you know, the oven panels and things of that nature. So I had no idea what any of that meant uh, coming out of the Army. Uh, by going through the Heroes Make America program and going out on the tours, which were absolutely essential to understanding what manufacturing looks like, uh, started to kind of get a grasp of what it was going to look like to move product now instead of uh, soldiers. I spent 20 years, you know, moving soldiers through training programs and in and out of combat in different areas around the world. Uh, and now I get to do that with a smaller team with material and manufacturing. It's not a whole lot different from your day-to-day -day leadership uh, style uh, environment that you're used to in the Army. Uh, it still baffles me that Sharon Williams uses uh, chain of command uh, as their uh, choice of describing their hierarchy as it goes through uh, their management roles and, and different staff positions. Uh, just something that exposed to once you get out. Uh, something that uh, you can really look forward to uh, coming into Sharon Williams is the values. They've got seven values just like we did in the Army. Integrity, people, service, quality, growth, innovation, and performance. Uh, and all of those pretty much caps on the same thing that, you know, we'd gone through and uh, fought next to each other um, and lived for a long time. And it's nice to see that the company has goals rooted in the same values that, uh, you know, we've been used to. Uh, as Ryan hit on this, the benefits, uh, the 401k and the pension plan, I am a huge advocate of it. Absolutely love it. Um, it picked up right where uh, my military uh, left off, uh, the 401, uh, transferred in there, great. Uh, so absolutely love that. Um, most of the benefits I'm still using because I am retired out of the Army, but as far as the medical and stuff for our, our plant, uh, it, it's a very good package and it's quite impressive to see uh, that kind of uh, attention paid to in, in a benefits package. Uh, another thing to look forward to is uh, training. You know, once you get out the military, it doesn't stop. Uh, I had the opportunity to go through uh, some leadership training uh, two months ago that was very much similar to the types of NCO development training that we go through in the military. Uh, and that helped me to better understand how to lead in, in the industrial manufacturing environment uh, and not necessarily uh, out on the battlefield. One of um, my favorite things about where I'm at is I'm a big innovation uh, person. I love to see continuous improvement. If we're not moving forward and we're sitting kind of stale, 
uh, that's just not my environment. I like the fast pace moving forward and, and making a difference. And with those, our customers are worldwide. Uh, you get the time to spend, um, I guess you could say a little bit of time with your customers, but you get to really know them through the products that they're requesting and the projects that you have to uh, put together and the innovation ideas that have to be drawn out in order to meet those demands. Uh, a customer comes in and says, hey, I want this particular red on this particular material. Well, there's a huge scientific uh, engineering feat that has to be overcome in order to make that happen. Uh, and then we'll spend you know, months testing it and uh, developing it before it even ships out to the customer to meet their demands. Um, so in that essence, you get to know your, your customers um, pretty well. You serve the people of the United States and, and across the, the world. You're still doing that with Sherwin-Williams. It's a huge, uh, they talked about the uh, global supply chain. It's just a huge network of product going to a lot of different customers worldwide. And every time something leaves the plant, it's, it's leaving there ready to be used. <clears throat> Customer doesn't have to worry about, um, you know, is it gonna fade? Is it gonna deteriorate? You know, is it good quality? Uh, what's gonna be the end result of this? They know what they're getting when they buy it. Uh, and that helps to uh, understand that you're still providing that same level of support uh, the folks. So you won't have to get rid of that as well <clears throat> once you get out. Uh, Sharon Williams is an environmental stewardship. I'm really big on environment. Uh, I love the fact that everything that we do is, is extremely safe. Uh, everybody's heads on a swivel. We're always looking around, always looking out for each other. If something doesn't look right, feels funny, everything stops. We take a look at it. Uh, put our heads together, um, and, and if it's safe, then we don't do it. We come up with a way to uh, either change the way that we're doing it or um, get the equipment necessary in order to make it safe, and that's a continuous effort within the plants. As far as the environmental goes, uh, we're, you know, we're doing weekly inspections on everything to make sure that nothing's leaking outside the plant. Um, you know, our air scr is scrubbed so that nothing's, those VOCs that are low to begin with aren't going out in the environment. Um, my plant is an industrial park. And when I drive down there, I don't smell paint. I smell fabric softener, you know. Um, I, I even smell the, uh, the metal being cooked at one of our plants down the street, aluminum plant. But what I don't smell is the heavy uh, resin smells and solvent smells and, you know, the, the alcohol solvent type smells that you would think that you would smell by being outside a plant, uh, a pan, hey, plant factory. Uh, some personal notes on uh, Sharon Williams. It's great to be part of a team. I was really nervous leaving the Army, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are. Uh, that team, we really come to rely on it. And everything we've done to be trained and um, make ourselves really sure of what we're doing, it gives us the confidence to do what we're doing. Uh, it's still involved in the civilian market. It's out there. Uh, I have a small team of folks that I work with. They're really great. If there's some type of hiccup. If there's something I don't know, there's folks that have been there for 20 years and they're not uh, shy to come up and say, hey, you know, we've done it like this before. Or, uh, let's take a look at this and, and work with you so that you don't uh, make the mistakes coming in. Uh, been there 10 months now. And my team that I work with right now feels like it's it's my army team. Uh, we just dress a little bit different, and um, you know I don't check the rooms in the morning on the on the way in to make sure that they're they're up and moving around. They do that on their own. Um, the values that you're going to bring from the army with you are tenfold to the environment that you're going into. Understand that um, in the military, you were trained to be trained. You were constantly being trained with little time. Uh, everything's on, on a crunch. Uh, you're given what you need to start. And then from there, you will hone your skills by going out there and doing them. So don't be afraid about getting out in, in, to anything in the industry. Uh, manufacturing, you've got the tools, you just don't realize it yet. 
uh, once you get out and start moving around and realizing that your skills equate to a lot more different things um, within this environment, you'll feel a lot more comfortable about your decisions and in, in going into manufacturing. With uh, Sharon Williams, they looked at the resume, they acknowledged the leadership skills. Um, they did start me off in a uh, supervisor role, which was intimidating, I will tell you that. Uh, I went from you know, having 50 to 60 folks to uh, 15 folks. You know, so it's a more intimate relationship uh, that I have with them. But that's 15 new individuals that, um, you know, I can't tell what to do. I have to lead them and, and not be aggressive with them or, uh, you know, be short with explanations and just get the mission done. I had to really step back and cope to uh, what they're doing. And surprisingly enough, the Army has prepared um, all of us for that and makes that transition much easier. When um, you start looking at uh, where you want to work, um, as discussed, there's many different opportunities. There's everything from the paint stores, um, distribution, all the way up through uh, making the raw materials that go into uh, the products that we're making. So when you go to sit down and write your resumes, think about your keywords, um, think about where it's, what you've developed on, think about your leadership skills, and try to equate those into things that you see as you go through tours of different uh, facilities. And that'll help catch your HR's um, eye and your, uh, your management's eyes and go, okay, well, this person's using uh, this keyword and this is what we're looking for uh, within our job descriptions. Uh, once you get in the interview, then you, it's much easier to explain those things uh, and try and put you know, your military terms more into uh, a civilian perspective. And then uh, last but not least, reach out to the folks that have graduated the program that are out here and, and doing it. I'm almost a year out now. And um, I still reach back to the guys that I went through class with. Uh, I still talk with Jen from time to time. Um, it's an excellent network that keeps you supported throughout that hard transition time period. And then even if it's not with Sharon Williams, find a place like Sherwin Williams that's got the ethics, that's got the values, that's got the, uh, the benefits to take care of you and your families. And then walk through the plants, talk to people. If they're disgruntled and they don't like their job, that's not the place for you to work. And if you walk through a Sherwin Williams plant, like our plant, people talk to you, they're smiling, they're happy. They're, they're, they're I mean, they've been there for 20 years, you know? Uh, so there's something right going on there. Those are the things you need to, to pick up on when you're looking for your jobs. So uh, with all that, uh, hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. If you have uh, questions, definitely uh, shoot in my direction. Love to talk to anybody that has, um, you know, any type of worries or concerns about getting out into the industry. And uh, when it comes to blowing smoke, Sharon Williams definitely is not blowing smoke. This is definitely a good place to be. Thanks, George. And I want to add um, for all of you senior leaders out there who may be thinking it, because I have this conversation with my own husband all the time about how he never wants to have to supervise anybody again in his life. Um, George used to say that same thing. He wanted to go to work every day and worry about himself and um, tinker was, I think, one of the words he used and, and then go home, you know. Um, and so the fact that he found himself in a supervisory role to begin his first civilian career um, is so interesting the way, you know, as we had a conversation, George, you may speak to this if folks have questions and whatnot, but um, the conversation later of how different it is as a civilian versus, um, you know, being a, a military leader, you know, di don't discount those opportunities just because you don't want to supervise anybody. Nobody's calling you when, you know, your soldier gets a DUI and you got to go pick them up at the station and, and all that good stuff anymore. But I just always thought that was so a little fun fact about George, but I hear it frequently. Yes, absolutely. Know your skills, know your skill set. really dig down deep and figure out what it is. Yes. I will love tinkering. I want to use that, that knowledge and build on things, but for me to get settled in and to manufacturing, the best route for me to go was leadership and um, allow the rest to follow on. 
So at this point, let's go ahead and open the floor for questions. Um, remember, you have that use hand feature or raise hand feature, sorry, down at the bottom that you should be able to um, access. Got some fun things going on in the chat too if you haven't seen it yet. All right, any questions? I can't believe through an entire presentation we don't have a single one. Any specific questions for George or for the Sherwin Williams team? Yeah, anything. Yeah, I have a question. I I don't have the hand wave either. I'm not sure what's going on my Zoom, but I hear that all the time. They're like, just hit the hand wave button. And <laughs> That's all right. We'll take this. Okay. I'm just analog, I guess. Um, so as far as, as far as the hiring process um, for transitioning veterans, what's a reasonable time frame to start uh, actually seeking to start, you know, engaging with employers and, you know, as far as your availability date, like how far out is it really uh, reasonable? to be talking to employers about uh, about jobs. That's for anybody. <laughs> um, actually, I would love to take a, a shot at that. Now. Um, as soon as you know you're getting out right now, um, get out there, talk to people, get on LinkedIn. It's, it's critical that you get on LinkedIn. It's an amazing resource. It's an amazing network. Get out and talk to people. Even if that's going to be the last absolute job you would work in your life, go visit them, go talk to them. Um, at least, if nothing else, mess up and get all of the nuances out of the way uh, with somebody that you would never work with uh, to begin with. Um, so that will help out. Start turning in those applications. Um, it can take months for uh, vetting. Um, and there's always overturn. If somebody doesn't work out for that job, it may be available three or four months down the road. And then your resume is still there. So just because it closes out, don't just dismiss it. Uh, understand that, you know, if, if folks don't work out, then the company's going to be rehiring real soon. I also wanted to mention that um, on our careers at Sherwin-Williams website, there is a way that you can set up a profile and you can get um, notifications for jobs that open up in specific locations. So say you were really interested in the Atlanta area um, and you were really interested in production you can get notifications sent to your email every time a production position opens up in one of our Atlanta plants or distribution centers or you know different locations, say you're more interested in retail or your wife's more interested in retail. Having her go ahead and set up a profile to see what our tag retail jobs are available in that location. So I think the best uh, advice I can give is setting up that profile, getting your resume, um, kind of straight away and putting that into our system so that you're getting those notifications and you could be putting in applications um, whenever you see those open roles. Question. All right. Um, I see Jordan Durlin, but I also think it's really Tyron. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, my question is more geared, to, uh, geared more towards the uh, transportation part. Uh, I see you guys have your, you know, your own private fleets, but uh, fleet drivers. But do you do you guys uh, contract out for like owner operator drivers? Yeah. No. Um. So really, at Sherwin Williams, we have two fleets, right? And we have our fleet company drivers, which really I touched on a little bit earlier, and that's those 800 folks I was telling you about. They're spread out regionally across the United States. We have another fleet, which consists of about 60 to 60 operators right now. It's called a CTS National. That's Contract Transportation Systems National. And I can send you the info for it, Jordan. But, um, and really what they do um, is they sign on drivers as contractors. So you won't work for Sherwin Williams, but you'll haul our product, you'll get our dispatch, you'll get the loads, you'll own your own truck, you're your own business and things however you want. Um, the good part about that though, is that, you know, it's a little bit different than what we do with our drivers. Our drivers primarily service our stores, our owner operators primarily go from plant to plant. 
So it's 99% no touch freight. You just drop and hook and you're going from building to building. And a cool part about CTS National is that they don't have a forced dispatch. So you're, you're not a company employee. So if, you know, you want to take a couple weeks off to, you know, go to Florida and sit on the beach, you know, I don't know whatever you want to do, but, you know, you work for yourself and you just haul our load. So you're able to work that out with them. So I can provide anybody on this call. Um, you know, you too, you know, anything you need in regards to being an owner operator or a company driver. Right. Okay. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, of course. Thanks. I'm muted. Dandy San Danny Sandoval. Yes. Uh, I had two questions. So I saw that the um, training and certificate programs, um, does how does the production certificate uh, certification um, does that go in as being pretty much a, a entry level qualified um, operator or is there more internal training once hired on um, and continuous training? But then I had a second question for George, um, which is a uh, I think for us senior people that have been waiting to listen from someone not only from the program but that's been a senior and gone in and a supervisor is, you know, how is that transition where you're not, you're not familiar, it's, it's new, but you do have the experience, you just got to jump in and, and, and go with the flow and you'll eventually catch on and how was that experience like, um, that'd be great to, to hear. I think to answer your first question about like training. Some of our production jobs, again, you, there's no requirement for previous manufacturing experience. So you can come in and, you know, we're going to do a lot of that initial training um, for one of those areas on the plant floor. So you might start maybe in the packaging area. And then as you train for that, you can cross train into all the other different groups um, where you might be operating a specific machine. Um, so again, it, it, it varies from site to site, depending on, you know, their operation, how, how the production line, uh, what the different departments are on the line. Um, so again, we pride ourselves on uh, giving you training on the job um, and giving you the ability to cross train, you know, from one production position to another production position. And then as we've mentioned from there, you can still continue to train and you know, go into some leadership positions, be a lead operator and into a production supervisor um, like George. So um, again, we do pride ourselves on uh, training and developing our people. George, do you want to take that second part? Yeah, so yeah, okay, I'm on mute now. All right, so as far as the, um, the training goes, most of our guys are spending uh, anywhere from two to three months training uh, with somebody before they're pretty much uh, on their own doing their job. Uh, they definitely get everything they need. They're comfortable with the job uh, before anybody's really set off on their own. We do have internal certification packets uh, and somebody checking off behind each step to, to show that they've demonstrated the, the skill set is there. Uh, for me, I don't like putting the ballerina on the defensive line with, you know, 400 pound guys. And I'm not putting a 400 pound guy on, you know, two, two on stage for the nutcracker. You know, we, we understand there's going to be differences and um, it will pick different things up. So that helps out during that process as well. As far as the senior leadership thing goes, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was timid. I, I really kind of had gotten burned out with, um, uh, having, you know, 40 children versus having my two children at home. Um, Cause that's kind of the care that you administer to your folks in, in, the, in the army. Um, once I was more relaxed with knowing that I'm not going to get these midnight calls. Um, you know, I don't have to go answer for somebody's DUI or something of that nature. You know, some of the negative nuances that were, were uh, irritating. Uh, it made me relax a little bit. And then the key to uh, being comfortable is understand that you're a leader. That leadership skill is what sets you apart from many different uh, management programs that are out there. Um, I did notice a lot of leadership built training in the Sherwin-Williams program, which was phenomenal. 
Uh, but I've talked to a lot of other folks and it's uh, the do as you're told type management mentality uh, that is out there in some areas. And that's really hard for them to grasp because they can't uh, really be themselves. They can't be personal with the, with uh, folks. Uh, you're going to develop a bond with your teams. Um, unfortunately, I've had a couple that have had family uh, pass away uh, since the 10 months that I've been there. And they come up to you and lean on you just as, as hard as anybody else would in the, in the military. So you have to have that bond, be able to go up to them and, and ask them how their family's doing. Uh, they're going to respect you for what you're doing. They're going to respect you because you're a leader and they're going to trust that you are learning your job. They're going to know that you're new, especially if you can come up through the ranks and start at maybe that filling line and work your way up through uh, a plant. Uh, honesty, integrity, and being personal with people will go a long way. Uh, don't worry too much about it. I was told that myself, um, thought it was crazy. And like Jen said, I was, I wanted to be an individual contributor. Leave me alone, let me work on stuff, let me fix stuff, let me figure stuff out. I don't wanna have to have a team or, or any of that. Um, but I couldn't really imagine not doing that now. Had I gone the other route, I would have still ended up I probably would have ended up uh, changing jobs and coming back into, into leadership and doing supervising. Thank you. Henry Carr, I see that you have a question. Yes, so um, mine is uh, basically when I wanted to figure out if there was some alternative method for like the factory tours and stuff like that. Cause it seems like everyone that has came to the program and we have these, uh, these webinars with um, say how advantageous it was for them to actually visit the factory. And so I, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm pretty sure a lot of us, you know, this is like, the army is what I've done my entire adult life. So, um, it's not really an easy transition, especially not knowing what you're going to and you're being recruited by various organizations. You wanna kind of get a feel of how the organizations run and um, you know how the employees are at that location. So uh, my main question was, um, is there an, an alternate means of uh, actually getting um, some kind of tour of a factory? That's a great question. I, um, you know, obviously with the pandemic, we're still very cautious about the number of visitors that we have to our sites. So, um, you know, we're doing a lot of our recruiting activities virtually, but we are doing some uh, in-person events. So again, it's a little bit different um, depending on what part of the country you are and, and things like that. Um, in places where we are hiring uh, significantly, uh, Madison can tell you we do do um, sometimes in-person events where you know we maintain social distancing, we uh, follow all the various guidelines, keeping everything clean, but moving applicants uh, through the process of um, being considered for a role, which also would include a plant tour. So again, it's not something that we're doing everywhere, um, but it is something that if it's a site that we do have openings. Um, part of that recruitment process is eventually going to lead to some type of in-person interview slash plant, plant tour. And Henry, I was going to add that kind of something along those lines too is, um, you know, from a Heroes Make America standpoint, that has always been such a valuable piece of, of our program. Um, and we are hoping that soon we can get back, even if it's very slowly, to doing some of those in-person tours. Um, but at the end of the day, the companies have to protect their employment, their employees and their business as well. And we understand that. But I would say any time that you are considering a company, um, especially if you're having an interview with them, I would request, you know, an individual tour potentially mm -hmm. through that plant that you could be working at. Um, many of them, I think, would probably extend that opportunity if they could. So um, even if you can't do it as part of our program, which we hope we'll be able to at some point, but always ask for that individual one if you're truly considering working there. 
uh, something else, Henry, to consider is uh, Google's a great option for looking for uh, videos. Um, I'm on toot my own plant's horn, but the Valspar Bowling Green coil coating plant has a three-part series that you can look up on Google that shows um, how the Valspar paint is made. It's a great highlight of um, the different areas of the plant and it shows uh, folks doing all those different jobs in there. And then of course, during the hiring process, uh, following all our COVID, we are still walking folks through the plant to make sure that it's a fit for them. Uh, so definitely request that of your um, employer, future employer while you're doing your interviews. I appreciate all the, the feedback. And uh, George, my main concern was, uh, you know, you being retired military, we've all worked with horrible bosses and we had horrible coworkers and comrades that we worked with. So mine was uh, more towards uh, actually building those uh, relationships with the individuals that work there to, you know, kind of feel how they feel about the organization, about the company. and how good of a fit that you would be in the company. Because um, honestly, all the, the um, individuals we talked to from the different organizations in the Heroes Make America program, um, they've been awesome organizations, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But you know, we, you still gotta kind of fill out how you're gonna you know, fit into that, that company. And that, that's, that was my main concern with the actual tour. Uh, my response back to that is take them to the ringer. Um, get in a boxing match with them. Um, obviously, be polite with it, but ask them the questions that you want uh, to know answers to, not necessarily the questions that they already have the answers to. Um, they expect for you to be on your A game and, and bring in everything that you're able to do. Um, they also expect that you're going to uh, treat them the same way. Uh, my HR, uh, lucky for me, he was prior military, he was prior HR. Um, he was a major in the army, so he was able to, to help me get some of the, the translations across. Um, my manager is a younger guy and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be, um, you know, young guy getting out into the environment and hard charging and, uh, hard headed, doesn't listen, um, you know, can't take, um, you know, a thought or an idea from somebody else. So we had a lot of good conversations um, prior to me actually even doing the interview. And I think that's, you know, Henry, that's another place too where LinkedIn can really be so beneficial to find those people on LinkedIn and start those conversations in that way, you know, where it's even outside of the environment, but you can get to know more about, but the more you talk to people who work in those places that you might be interested in, you're going to get some honest input um, that will help you. Now, I always say, you know, when you're looking at reviews and different things online, take those things with a grain of salt, because when do we tend to post reviews, right? Usually when I'm unhappy about something. Um, but as you get onto those professional networks and start having conversations, um, when they're those one-on-one, -on -one, you're doing informational interviews and things, people are going to be pretty honest with you about their experiences. So. And hey, I, was, I had actually had this play out, which you're exactly what you're talking about the other day. I was looking for a specific company interested in working for them in Texas and the specific uh, position I was interested in I, through LinkedIn. I was able to, to link up with somebody that was in that position, former uh, army veteran. And I was on a call with him on Monday. And the same deal, I'd, I'd got on, I did a lot of research on the company, uh, had some reviews that were kind of disturbing, but they were from different states, different manufacturing uh, you know, spots. I couldn't really find anything for that specific location. So talking to him, I just you know did exactly what Georgia was saying. I just started asking those questions, you know, after we kind of got comfortable with each other. I said, well, hey, let's talk about, you know, these things. Cause I've been, you know, I've, I've saw some things online about this, this and this, how is that at your location? And uh, he was able to give me, you know, just an honest assessment of what he does, how he likes it. Um, you know, some things that you're not going to find online or in reviews or even in the company's information. And so it was, that was really, really beneficial. So everything they're, they're telling you, I actually have, I just lived that over the past like six days. Um, so absolutely LinkedIn is, is crucial. 
to getting getting those relationships built. And then when I get to Texas, he's going to bring me in and take me on the tour of the place, show me around, and you know that'll lead to, I'm sure meeting people that work there and you know all those other things. So you know, like they say, the military relationships are pacing items, and that's a you know I don't think that changes in the civilian world. It's probably even more important. Aaron, that's that's a great um, opportunity that you had, and that's that's paramount. Um, I get to do mine in person versus LinkedIn. Um, something to add on to that, if, if they are too eager to hire you, stop and think about why. Um, if they're just trying to fill a slot, then that's the wrong answer. I know that um, the management team at the Bowling Green plant um, walked me around, had me talk to um, everybody there first. They really tried me out to make sure that I was going to be a good fit gave me the opportunity to also do that. If the interview process is not at that level of respect and comfortableness, then that's probably not some place that you're really gonna be uh, good at coming from a military background. Good conversation. And I would encourage you all, if you have um, you know questions along that line, the transition moving from you know military into manufacturing, whether it's with Sherwin-Williams or anyone, reach out to George. He's a great point of contact. And I know he's willing to, um, you know, not just speak with you, but mentorship is a huge thing too. He's successfully done this transition. So I do want to hop over though, Dan McDonald, I know you have a question, um, interest in global supply chain. Oh, I think you're still muted. There it goes. Here. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, my question is uh, for George, one, about the recruiting process. If you could speak a little bit more about the recruiting process and how you got started and uh, approximately how long it took you to get placed and uh, maybe a little bit about the onboarding. Um, and then if, if the, the question to anyone is about the, just a, a little bit of information about the global supply chain in management, that would be my interest, uh, would be in management. Uh, okay, Dan. So what um, I started with, um, I actually met uh, the HR representative and production manager at a job fair at Fort Campbell. And um, they said that they were looking for a supervisor. And I said, well, I'm just looking for maintenance. I want to use this new shiny uh, Megatronics certificate I'm getting um, currently. And uh, we discussed a little bit and they said, well, if you're interested, and in fact, the slide that's up here looks very similar to the handout that they had given me. And I kept it and I put possibility on top. Um, I linked in with both of them on LinkedIn and then started to take a look at um, different things around the, the area because Bowling Green was where I was moving to. I knew that um, for the school district, but now I needed to find the job and start looking at those aspects. So the more that I reached out to different people to try and do, um, you know, some type of walkthrough with them, sit down and have a lunch with them, do some type of networking thing with somebody that worked there, uh, I found that to be quite difficult. During um, one of our tours out to Bowling Green, it was with the Sherwin-Williams plant. And as we walked through, I started seeing all the characteristics that I really liked out of uh, management, ownership, um, personality, the way that this guy was interacting with um, all of his team members and everything uh, was all genuine. There was no, no falseness there. And that kind of, I guess, put my guard down a little bit about doing the supervisor role. Uh, and then we had a luncheon that was uh, sponsored by Sherwin Williams. They sponsored this day being um, the sponsors of the Hero Make America program. And I, I talked with some of the rest of the, the folks um, and I kept getting, every, everywhere I went, I kept getting, oh, supervisor this, supervisor that, mid-management, nothing for what I was really looking for. So I knew I was gonna have to tailor that a little bit differently. And um, I had an opportunity to talk to them during the lunchtime. They said, hey, this is the possibility. Come take a look at it, walk the plan. Let's do some one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, let's you know, dive into your resume. So I went back and, and geared my resume from doing the Mechtronics more over to the leadership skills. Um, 
sent that over. They reviewed it. We sat down and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it was a three hour interview process. Uh, we walked the floor. I talked to uh, everybody out there that was doing their jobs and uh, felt really comfortable with it. Uh, I knew it was gonna be a challenge and I knew that I was gonna um, struggle a little bit, but the environment is what made me comfortable. So that's the opportunity that I went with. The onboarding process, um, I spent um, pretty much the first month going through uh, the safety regulations, uh, certifications for different things on the site. Um, started to kind of ease my way into understanding how their tech flows throughout the plant. Um, it's not an assembly line, so it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to follow product through there. So there was a lot of time spent making sure I completely understood how the product goes through, who does what, who touches what, and the time frames for that. And about um, beginning of the third month, I transitioned on nights and was off on my own uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but once again, what allowed me to do that is I had a team that was backing me up, that were honest with me, that we could work together and, you know, there was no um, attention because, you know, a new supervisor had worked in the plant. Uh, I was just natural with everything and told them up front, hey, you guys teach me, I treat you, um, you know, we'll learn this together. Let's see, there was a second part of that question. Um, Ryan, I don't know if that's your. Yeah, I, I can answer that. I mean, um, and, and the rest of the group, I mean, global supply chain to us is a very large organization um, and it consists of several different capacities of business. So, you know, you can work in human resources or transportation or distribution. You could be an engineer or a chemist, you know, and all of those jobs roll up into our division. So, you know, they, the slides that we talked about earlier, you know, from the map that Michelle showed, um, you know, of the United States with all the stars all over it to the slides that I kind of covered in regards to manufacturing and distribution at a really high level, kind of sum up global supply chain a little bit. But what I would recommend for you to do, you know, really would be to, to go to the Sherwin-Williams website, you know, and, and you can select what function of business is interesting to you. So you can look at operations only jobs, or you can look at, you know, safety jobs or engine jobs, if that's something that's up your alley. And, and really what you can do there is reach out to someone at the company. Cause kind of like George said earlier, and I'll tell you guys, you know, I don't come from the military myself, but I've worked with a lot of veterans in my career, especially at Sherwin Williams. And we talk, um, you know, it, and me personally, when I was coming out of college, I thought I aspired to be a lawyer. And I went to a prosecutor's office and I did an internship. And I can tell you one thing, I sure as hell hated it. And I would have never known that without talking to some of these folks that worked in that industry, you know, and it wasn't against them personally. It was just, you know, I could tell they didn't love their job, you know, and who, and I was like, man, this isn't for me. And, you know, I ended up interviewing with my first boss at Sherwin-Williams. And, and coincidentally, I've worked for her twice now um, in different capacities of business, but she loved it. And she had a lot. I felt really welcome during the interview. And I was like, okay, this is good. This is the total opposite of what I was doing before, right? And, you know, really from there, most people that I've encountered or worked with or worked for at Sherwin-Williams had felt the same way. Because like George said before, a lot of them have been here for 20, 30 years, you know, and people tend to stick around. So, um, you know, really for you, Dan, to answer your question, you know, if you look at the website and you look at those different job types, the best way is, you know, obviously, if you're ready to apply, apply, um, you know, or if you want to just reach out and learn more, you know, reach out and learn more. Um, you know, Jen always knows where to direct um, those kind of questions, whether it's, to, you know, Madison, myself, Michelle or whoever. Um, and we can hook you up with a recruiter, you know, that goes for any of you or somebody that works in that capacity of business that can probably elaborate more to you. So, you know, you can say, hey, this is cool. I mean, you know, sometimes, especially after the military, you know, a little less structured, it, it tends to take turns that you would never imagine. And you might think in your head, just like me, you know, 
I want to be a production supervisor. And you talk to somebody who work in safety and you're like, wow, I never thought I'd do this, but this is cool. So, you know, just uh, leave your horizons open and, and just, you know, just keep pushing for the next step. That'd be my advice to you and tell you a little bit about GSC. Yeah, like I might be a truck driver because I want to go to the truck driver rodeo. <laughs> um, there was something, oh, I know what I was going to add to that, Ryan. Thanks for um, saying all that. Any of you who are on the call right now, whether you are participating in the Heroes Make America training program or you are you know, attending this event because you're looking for employment, if you decide to apply with Sherwin-Williams, please reach out to any of us on the Heroes Make America team. We will gladly do a personal introduction to um, you know, whoever the right person is within that company. And we'll try to see if we can, you know, help facilitate. We of course can't guarantee any kind of employment because that's going to come down to their needs as well as your skills experience, what you can really bring to them as a company. Um, but we will definitely, you know, reach out where we can to help facilitate that introduction and, and that opportunity. So um, with that, we are coming to the end of the time. So I want to take just a moment to thank Sherwin Williams, not just for this event today, but for being such wonderful um, sponsors of the Heroes Make America program, but partners in general um, with your support to the military and veteran community. Um, companies like you, it's just, it's invaluable. And um, we hope that we can continue. Well, we know that we'll continue to do more events with Sherwin Williams, um, but we really you know, enjoy. I know that I personally love working with all of my local Sherwin folks, um, but we want to connect as many people with them as possible. So um, thank you again for taking the time. If we could, Tyler, go ahead and go to that next slide. Got just a couple things to wrap up with here. So um, while we're doing this, I am going to go ahead and launch a poll for you there. I went ahead and put that up. Um, just a little bit of immediate feedback so we can kind of know, gauge, you know, how you felt about the event, but then also, are you interested in applying with Sherwin-Williams? So there's actually three questions in this feedback poll. So make sure you scroll all the way down and answer all three of those, okay? Um, then your next steps. Go check out the careers.sherwinwilliams.com page so you can take a look. And then like uh, Madison mentioned, you can actually build your profile on there so that you're getting those notifications automatically. You don't have to go back to the site every week or two weeks or even free more frequently. Um, they will automatically send those notifications to you. And I would say be open to other opportunities, right? Don't I know everybody has in their mind where they want to move, but be open to um, opportunities in other locations too, if you're able to. Follow both Heroes Make America and Sherwin-Williams on LinkedIn. And then I know Madison was putting some information over in the chat box so you could um, connect with their team as well. Um, but connect with the Heroes Make America team on LinkedIn as well. We are always happy to help facilitate with uh, relationships where we can help with career um, readiness and things of those things of that nature. I'm gonna pull it together here today. Uh, we do use the hashtag Heroes Connect M2M, um, so you can actually follow that on social media. But you can use that to post about any events um, as well. And then um, as you get invitations, share them with others. Right? These opportunities, having the opportunity to speak directly with people who are doing the hiring in these companies, who are working in these companies, and then folks like George who have successfully transitioned from the military into these companies to hear how those um, experiences have been. Those are the types of things that you can get from this, even if we can't get you into the physical facility right now. So um, share with others. There's thousands of military service members transitioning every year. There's so many veterans unemployed and there's so many military spouses who want to work and we all know that struggle um, personally so uh, but our next event is going to be friday october 23rd so that's this friday at 11 a.m eastern 10 a.m central and that's going to be with pepsico so look for that invitation to come soon please join us for that i'm going to stop talking now but thank you all for joining us today and we hope that we will see you on a future event so everyone have a wonderful day.